Hey, Jasmine here, and welcome to another book review. I fell a little behind schedule today, but I did it. I finished the next book before today. I'm going to talk about Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. But first, on to the book description. Sally Mills is a sketch writer for The Night Owls, a late-night live comedy show that airs every Saturday. With a couple of heartbreaks under her belt, she's long abandoned the search for love, settling instead for the occasional hookup, career success, and a close relationship with her stepfather to round out a satisfying life. But when Sally's friend and fellow writer Danny Horse begins dating Annabelle, a glamorous actress who guest hosted the show, he joins the not-so-exclusive group of talented but average-looking and even dorky men at the show and in society at large, who've gotten romantically involved with incredibly beautiful and accomplished women. Sally channels her annoyance into a sketch called The Danny Horse Rule, poking fun at this phenomenon while underscoring how unlikely it is that the reverse would ever happen for a woman. Enter Noah Brewster, a pop music sensation with a reputation for dating models who signed on as both host and musical guest for this week's show. Dazzled by his charms, Sally hits it off with Noah instantly, and as they collaborate on one sketch after another, she begins to wonder if there might actually be sparks flying. But this isn't a romantic comedy, it's real life. And in real life, someone like him would never date someone like her, right? This video is definitely going to be more about what kind of book this is rather than what I thought of it. Because something I learned everyone else who read it felt the exact same way about it is that the description does almost nothing to prepare you for what's on the pages. But I also want to talk about my expectations versus what I actually got. First, the book is split into three chapters. Three chapters. Only three. So I'm going to talk about this book one chapter at a time. Chapter one follows the main character, Sally, who is a writer for a comedy sketch show. So basically SNL. Chapter one is 128 pages. I thought the fatigue of not having small chapters to break up the section would get to me, but luckily there are timestamps that split the chapter into sections with the day of the week and the time. Now for a book called Romantic Comedy with the plot description of a girl who thinks sparks are flying with a celebrity, my expectations were that this book would be bubbly, funny, and cute. The reality was it was more like reading a fictionalized memoir of a comedy writer. It was a lot of work schedules, meetings, and information dumps on the fictionalized world. There were several pages I skimmed because I honestly did not give a damn about the history of the sketch show or the world of a writer, at least not in so much detail. The narrator, Sally, would constantly go into these long explanations that would make me lose interest. Meanwhile, the romance is less of a romance and more some subtle flirting and a lot of Sally's internal monologue of insecurities and doubts. That was the part that actually kept me reading um, was this ability to sympathize with her. Chapter 2 is the one I really want to talk about. Chapter 2 takes place during the pandemic. That was surprise number one. Uh, when what I thought would be a bubbly romantic turned into a COVID romance. The other surprise is that chapter 2, which starts on page 131 and ends on 202, is entirely made up of emails. It's back and forth emails between Sally and Noah taking place during the lockdown. And this is when the actual getting to know each other part of the book is. At first I thought it was something different. Uh, romance told in emails but about a third of the way in, I started to get a little bored. The interactions felt real, but I guess I wanted more from a book. Something that's unique to novels is the descriptions. These poetic chapters, um, getting to experience what the characters think and feel. And reading someone's emails just wasn't something that could really make me feel immersed in the book. Chapter 3 is back to the first person narrative 
still during the lockdown, but when the face-to-face -face interactions between the characters started again. This is a chapter I actually enjoyed more because the romance felt real, but the thing is it's not at all what the plot description advertised. And that's just something I want to make very clear. The plot description story is entirely chapter one. Everything else after is completely unexpected. I never read reviews before I pick up a book because they influence my decision too much and I want to be able to read books even when they're not what I'm usually interested in. But I do read reviews after I finish a book. What I saw was most of them seemed to feel the same as I did. Whether they loved or hated this book, they all seemed to agree that the plot description didn't properly convey the tone of the book. This book is much more serious. Uh, it's not a comedy. Either that or my sense of humor didn't match what was on the page because I there were no laugh out loud moments for me, or even subtle laughing. As for romance, it's very mild. There aren't a lot of interactions between the characters, so I wasn't entirely sold on this cosmic connection, but at the same time it felt more real because the romance seemed to be based on how much these two wanted to continue to interact with each other, which might not be what you're looking for in a romantic fiction. I personally never felt captivated by the book, and although there wasn't really much I disliked, there also wasn't anything I loved, which is why I'm giving this book one star for my personal score, meaning it just wasn't for me. The next book I'm reading is an indie novel called Back from the Dead by Andre Spiteri. I'm still holding out hope for that next five star read, but the good thing is I'm still enjoying myself with most of these books. If you're an indie author, tell me a little about your book in the comments and I'll check it out. I'm behind on my blog posts of the reviews, but I'm planning on catching up with that sometime this weekend. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye!